In a previous video, we looked at the biosynthesis of cysteine. We're going to look now at a biomolecule. It's not technically an amino acid, although some sources consider it an amino acid for different reasons. And we're going to look at the synthesis of taurine from cysteine. Taurine, by some sources, is considered an amino acid, um, not because it has a carboxylic acid, but because it has the typical amine, and it has sort of a, a sulfate group attached here, a sulfate-like group, um, and that's considered an acid in its deprotonated form. So some sources will call this an amino acid also, even though it's not technically our definition of an amino acid. Okay, But it turns out that Taurine is, an, is a non-essential nutrient, meaning it's a non-essential amino acid. We don't have to get it through the diet. We can actually biosynthesize it ourselves. And seeing as cysteine is also non-essential in humans, we can make it, then we can certainly make taurine. All right, so taurine is an amino acid that is known to be essential for life, okay? The reason we know it's essential is because they've done studies where they've depleted cells or uh, tissues or organs of the taurine and their function drastically suffers, okay? In fact, there was one thing that I read at one time. Um, there was a woman who uh, had a cat as a, as a pet and this woman was a hardcore vegan. Um, one of these, not, not like the typical ones you meet, but like ultra hippie kind of. And she decided she was going to feed her cat nothing but rice. No cat food because the cat food has meat. So she fed her cat nothing but rice for a while and the cat went blind. The reason the cat went blind is because cats do not have the capacity to make taurine. Most, most mammals can make taurine, but for whatever reason cats lack an enzyme that doesn't allow them to make taurine in levels that support life. So normally cat food, the normal food that cats eat, has taurine in it, so they're able to get it, but cats cannot synthesize this themselves. And taurine is required in a lot of systems. It's required in the nervous system, that includes the eyes also. It's important for the heart. Um, there's a lot of things that use taurine, and so because it wasn't getting taurine, it went blind, okay? It can't, these animals, can't, Cats are, are some organisms that in general we would call obligate carnivores because they have to get some nutrients through that uh, in, in levels that support their well-being. Okay, now we can, um, we can certainly make taurine, um, although it is good to get some of it through the diet as a supplement. Now, we know it's important mostly because we've depleted cells of it and we've seen their function suffer, although most of the exact functions of taurine are really not understood at all. Okay, we know it's necessary, we know it's a healthy thing to consume and make, we don't really know what it's for. There's only one well-elucidated uh, function of taurine, and that's in the synthesis of bile acids, which a bile acid, thus the word bile, these are large steroid-like molecules that ultimately get released into the intestines, and you've heard of bile emulsifying fat. Well, the component of bile that emulsifies the fat in your diet in the intestine are bile acids. And I don't have a structure here, but and it turns out that some bile acids are conjugated to taurine. Um, and that gives them some special functions to act as detergents and things like that. Okay, and they're important for digestion of lipids. That's about the only well-known function of taurine. Everything else is sort of speculation. We know that you have to have it, um, but we don't really know what it's for. Now, in terms of the synthesis, it again starts from cysteine, and I actually have another video on this I'll put in the playlist. It's a little bit different, but it turns out cysteine is going to react with an enzyme called cysteine dioxygenase, an iron-dependent enzyme, in which case you're going to get cysteine sulfonate, which is going to be decarboxylated. Note that the CO2 is now gone. It gets decarboxylated to hypotaurine, and then hypotaurine dehydrogenase, which is an NADH producing enzyme like cysteine dioxygenase over here. Um, this is going to convert hypotaurine to taurine. So a relatively easy synthesis, um, but again, a synthesis that's necessary for any organism um, that needs taurine in large amounts. Otherwise, they're going to have to get it through the diet. Okay? So hopefully that made sense. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.